Hello everyone and welcome to our Spark AR Masterclass video where we'll be talking about AR and education. I'm a product manager on Facebook Spark AR platform and this is Yash. I'm an engineering manager on the developer platform. So today we're going to be talking about education and AR and this is an interesting topic for me having uh, I think I was employee number four in an education startup. I found a main education startup so I've been working in this space for a, a, a number of years and I think there's a huge potential for AR to have an impact in education. It gives us an opportunity to explain things in a, a, a totally new way, you know, using a new medium that uh, can really enhance how we teach in the classroom or how we learn outside of it. Uh, and so today, I think we want to explore that a little bit, maybe show how easy it is to make an effect uh, that can do that uh, and build up some knowledge for all of us to sort of take away and, and use uh, to, to, for creating AR education effects in the future. Sounds good. So I think what I'd like to do is make something that's bite-sized that actually helps children learn. Yeah. I think we don't want to make something that's too complicated, that tries to do too many concepts at the same time. What would be ideal if we could just make something that really crisply explains one concept? Yeah. So I think we have a brief already for this, uh, for this effect that we've thought about and I think we want to do, and that's to build an effect that allows a student to understand scientific concepts. Right. So I was thinking that my, my girlfriend, Helen, she's a teacher of nine and 10 year olds. And one of the things that she's been talking to me about recently, which she's been working on, is how to explain the concept of day and night uh, and the fact that the earth rotates around the sun. Oh, that's a hard concept. Yeah. So yeah. that can be... And like For a nine year old. Sure. Yeah. Right. And it's difficult on a, in a 2D space on a, on, a, on a whiteboard to say yeah. that these physical objects are moving around them. And then when you want to do a demonstration of how the light involves, I mean, how could you do it in a classroom? Maybe you could make it dark and you could get a light out and shine it on a pretend pretend uh, earth object and sort of have that move but it all seems a bit clunky and it takes a long time to set up yeah that's i mean it's interesting because when you're in a classroom you don't have access to these objects right i mean and maybe some classrooms but most of them don't and i think ar is a kind of platform which can actually open up these opportunities because we can just use 3d objects and yeah. use like uh, light sources and stuff It'll be interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, actually, in many ways, we can use some of the core concepts of things we built in your AR studio because we have we have lighting, yes. we have 3D objects, we have yeah. movement of 3D objects. And I think combining those yeah. can give us a sort of really simple way for uh, a nine or 10 year old to sit there with their phone and sort of explore how these two things interact. And hopefully that will give them a different perspective and way to sort of see these things physically rather than just looking at a, a plain whiteboard and someone trying to draw a diagram or even a, a video, which doesn't really bring it. Bring it which to life, doesn't right? really bring it to life. That's true. That's true. So what do you think is going to be the learning objective for this? So I think the learning objective, we should probably, I think we can do two things. I think the first one is we can look at the concept of day or night by showing the Earth's rotation. So if we have the sun shining on the Earth, we can see that it's light where the sun's shining or it's when it basically the Earth is facing the sun and it's dark when it rotates. And because you can see this rotation, you should be able to see, ah, when it's at this point, uh, this whole side of the Earth's light and as it moves around, yeah, I can see it goes into darkness. That's when, that's when night happens. But I also think we can probably work out how to make the Earth orbit the sun as well. Yes. So we can see that that's how that process works. Yeah. Because um, one of the core concepts we want to try and make sure the children understand is that the Earth orbits the sun uh, rather than the sun orbiting the Earth, which is the common misconception that people have. Yeah. Which makes perfect sense, right? Because when you yeah. look in the sky, you see this Sun's sun going around. Right, right. and you yeah. think, right, so we're, I'm standing still yeah. and the sun appears to be moving. And as a nine-year-old, you can understand why you have that view. So I think we can sort of explain, actually, that's not the case and there's something else different going on there. So I think that means we want to build an effect that allows students to better understand the movement of the Earth around its axis and around the sun. Sounds good. Let's, cool. uh, let's do this. So now that we've talked about the key concepts and uh, the learning objectives, I just want to talk about what are the different things that we'll require to make this happen. Do we need to build them? Do we need to design them? Uh, so you mentioned the Earth, you mentioned the Sun, you mentioned a light source, you mentioned some animation of the Earth around the Sun. Yeah, I think uh, exactly. Yeah, so we definitely need a Sun. We need a representation of the Sun, so you know it's the Sun. Right. We also need something that looks like the Earth. Yeah. And I think that the thing that looks like the Earth can't just be a sphere because we're trying to we're going to get this rotation thing. So yeah. we will be like, oh, I can see the continent of Africa and it's light and now it's dark. That so would I be awesome. We yeah. probably need something on it which so a sphere, but it looks sphere like with the, earth. the texture on top. Of it. Exactly, a sphere yeah. with the texture looks so it looks like the Earth, uh, the Sun. I think therefore we need like a, a light.
light source that represents the sun, so yeah. a light source that's sort of omnidirectional. Yeah. Um, I think those are the two core concepts. And then and we how need to show the orbit of the Earth around the sun. That's a really good question. I think. Like, do you, do we need like a line sort of chasing the thing, like sort of like a circle? Yeah. So it can draw out like a, an orbit. Yeah. Yeah. That's, we that's can, a good idea. Yeah. yeah we if can. we can like, so when it starts moving, you can see that this is where it's been. So you can yeah. get the impression that the Earth orbits around. Um, that sounds around great. Sun. So let's get started with uh, Spark Air Studio. Uh, let me open up. Spark Air Studio. Cool. So if we have a, a look at the opening screen, and we can just create a just create a new project for this one. Yeah. And we can come in. And then I think we want to, what do we want to do? We, we talked about the objects we want to add. So we want to have a sun, a light source, the earth. Um, I think that the drawing the line, we can do that a bit later. And then we need some, I think we need some logic also to control it. Like how do you, we're trying to explain this concept so it can't just be fully in motion because I think that doesn't really help explain anything. We want to be able yeah. to sort of make it additive and you, you can maybe tap. You I go think. through the steps yeah, as so you, you can, discover each and every step. Exactly. Right? So okay. you, and then we can sense. see the relationship. Yeah. So we might need... You might need some changing states, so you can sort of see, tying like, into the pedagogy of the the lesson plan. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, so you it. can like build it up, and you can understand this in steps rather than just sort of here's a model of the solar system. Just go with it. We want it to be a bit more, bit more exploratory, I think. Right. So I guess. So for the Earth, uh, I mean, for for assets, it would take a lot of time to create this. I mean, and for this class, we probably just want to bring in something that's pre-made. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the cool things about Spark AR Studio is that we have an integration with Sketchfab. Um, you also have a pretty good audio library. So you can actually import um, 3D assets like Earth, Sun, whatever have you, uh, that the community has built under Creative Commons license, mm -hmm. and then import that into your uh, space and you're done. Right? Cool. And it comes with uh, sometimes with bone animation or sometimes with like uh, other kinds of textures built in. So let's explore it. Sweet. Let's see what we can find. Cool. We go to assets, we go to import from AR library, and then we search for, I think the first thing we want is the sun. Don't seem to have any on that main page. Maybe we expand it a bit more. Yes. Oh, there we go. There's one called sun. Sun. Perfect. That's awesome. a, that was lucky. Let's add the sun in. And uh, we also want to find the earth, right? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get that done as well. Oh, there are lots of words. Planet Earth. That looks good. Planet Earth, yes. That one is good. And so you normally have to log in to Sketchfab. Um, but since I'd already logged in, so I okay. the trouble. Um, now, you want to place that into the real world. But how do you want to exactly bring this in? Because let's say, you know, this experience is in a classroom um, and kids have notebooks mm. or, you know, we could use target AR. Target AR is a concept of essentially using a two-dimensional target, uh, any image-based target, uh, to bring an effect, to trigger an effect. Cool. So almost like we could have an image in a textbook, for instance, which could yeah. trigger it. Yeah. We so could, you can just yeah. be like, turn to pages 24 and have a look at the image, use yeah. your phone, Here's the solar use system. an iPad in the classroom, yeah. more realistically. Exactly. Um, and then you can bring this thing to life. Yeah. Cool. So that means we need a target, right? We need a target, yeah. Do you have a target? Well, I happen to have these lovely Spark AR stickers. Oh, nice. So maybe that could work for now yeah. in lieu of a, a textbook. So yeah. Obviously, we could update this image with a, with a textbook. So Yes, of course. How, the question is, though, how do I get this into this? I think the best thing to do would be to just take a picture. Okay. So a picture like this. Um, and then we just uh, sort of airdrop it. Awesome. So you're just going to airdrop it onto the onto my computer, onto my computer, and then you're going to be able to add it into Spark AR Studio. Yes. Awesome. Sounds easy. Sounds easy enough. Uh, we probably yeah. want to crop it though. Okay. Right, because this would be too much information. So we could probably just. Uh, And does it have to be a photo or could I use something else? Like, could I, if I have a, a picture, like a, something I've already created, 
and like maybe a piece of artwork that I oh made. absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so yeah. I can I can do that it can I be a raw image as well or it can be like we could have used the source file for this okay. um, sticker and then use that as well and do you have any sort of tips and tricks as to what I should probably think about when I'm using that can I use anything um, so anything with high texture quality is generally preferred so like an image with some variation in it you know yeah. if I was to use like a a single line or something that wouldn't be on a white that wouldn't, paper, yeah, that wouldn't yeah. work. That wouldn't so really anything work, with yeah. a bit of detail, something for the yeah. recognition of systems sort of get its teeth into and, and be yes. able to recognize. Okay, cool. Yeah. That, that makes sense. So a, a detailed, a detailed textureful image is this best. Is, yes, this is detailed enough. So we should be okay. we should be fine with this one. Uh, let me just uh, crew drop it. There we go. Oh, awesome. And then we just bring it in. So we add a plane tracker. Now, a target tracker is just a special type of plane tracker. Okay. Because we're initializing a plane tracker with the help of a target. Okay. So we could name this uh, target tracker. All we need to do is single tap, and then we're done. And then we have an option for target here on the right hand side. And this is where we're going to see a lot of other options mm -hmm. like position, scale, rotation, okay. uh, things which are specific to our tracking objects or our physical 3D objects, okay. uh, which we bring into the scene tree. Okay. So uh, we bring in a texture. Uh, we have to attach a texture. Uh, and the texture could be anything. So we can say new image texture. Okay. In this case, we sort of Go to downloads. So that's the image you we just took a photo of and you yes. popped down. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That's the image. As you can see, it's trying to compress the image already, which is awesome. Um, and uh, okay, so we've got a plane tracker in the scene, and now we need to start building up the sort of core components of the lesson. I think the thing we discussed earlier was maybe having a tap gesture so you could go through each part of the this. The yep. actual effect. So you could yep. like turn on the sun, you could turn on the rotation of the earth, you could then turn on like the orbit of the earth around so the sun. So like the different steps involved. Yeah, so it's like process. exploratory. So it doesn't just all happen. You've just got an effect which shows everything. You can like yep. see how like the sun works, how the you know the earth is dark perhaps without the sun. Yeah. Um, and so you can sort of see those steps and, and build up a picture of how this sort of system works together. Yeah. Let's so, build it up. Cool. So I guess the first thing is like how do we add a touch gesture? So uh, for a test gesture, we have uh, something called a patch editor. And now patch editor essentially allows us to bring in behaviors or interactions uh, from not just the trackers in the scene tree or be able to manipulate a scale rotation um, and position, but we can also bring in certain gestures from the screen itself, from the device. Okay. So for that, what we need to do is we right click here, we look for tap gesture, uh, now we have two types of tap gestures. One is like tapping on an object. So that could be like a button okay. or a UI element. Or in this case, you want to do screen tap, which sort of detects a tap on the entire screen. Okay, so anywhere on the screen you tap. Anywhere on the screen okay. you can, yeah. And so if we zoom in, uh, we can see the screen tap. Uh, and now based on this, I think what you wanted was sort of a step-by-step -step process, yeah. like a step-by-step -step rollout of the whole effect. Yeah. Uh, so for that, we could use a counter effect, a counter patch. Okay. So a counter patch essentially allows you to have a maximum counter. It counts by one. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can uh, sort of link the tap to the increase of this counter. Okay. Yeah. And then what it's going to do is it's going to keep on increasing the number, the count uh, by one. Uh, and the maximum count is five. Okay. And what happens after you get to five? That just... uh, it goes back to zero. It loops back to zero. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so the counter goes to five. And now what we want to do is uh, we want to bring in the sun. Is that what you wanted? Well, I think we need that. Like, how do we make it so when I tap the first time, the second time, the third time, that it will do different things. Because I think we know the three things you want to do is right. like control the sun's visibility, we want to control the rotation of the Earth. So what you're talking about orbit. is like conditions, right? Yes. Uh, normally, somebody would have to write that in script, but thanks to Patch Editor, we can actually do it right here with uh, greater than or equal to, okay. in this case, uh, or equal to if you just wanted it to trigger once. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, we can say greater than or equal to one, 
uh, and then do something, right? Okay. And so what we're really doing here is that we're connecting these dots, which are like inputs and outputs to a patch. Uh, and we can set the, in many cases, we can set the data type, uh, which I'll show with um, transition and animation, okay. uh, where you can actually manipulate uh, 3D uh, scale or, or rotation or uh, 2D positions or Boolean or vectors or, or, or pulse values. Okay. Um, cool. So, yeah. So, so this these... count, we've got a number, haven't we? Because we've got the, the, literally it's a counter of the amount of time someone's tapped on a screen. Yes. And we're saying once that gets, it starts at zero, once it gets above one, we want to do something. So once it gets above one, I guess, like you said, the first thing you want to do is turn, make the sun visible. Yeah. So the earth is already going to be visible, but we need the sun. But actually, the moment we haven't got the earth or the or sun. Or the sun inside. inside. So, so let's right. let's put that in. So for the sun, we just sort of drag and drop it in. Uh, and we do the same thing for earth. Sorry. We do the same thing for earth. And as you can see, uh, when I put these both in, uh, it's taking the relative position to the plane. Okay. Uh, target tracker in this case, which is a plane tracker by default. Uh, and so we need to move the earth out a little bit and make it appear smaller as well. Okay. Uh, so we can actually just change the position from here or we can, we have the ability to, to do this directly in the scene as well. So we can use, you can see the arrows over here. So we can ah, actually okay. just drag it out like this. And then if we take the top view, we can see that the Earth is on the left-hand side. Seems like the Earth's a little big at the moment. A little big, that's for sure. Uh, so let's reduce it in size. Cool. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and now we have the Sun, we have the Earth. Uh, I think relative position seems all right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be super accurate. Uh, no, I think that's right. I think we're just trying to sort of give an impression here and try to understand the, sort of the whole system in play. I don't think it needs to be perfectly scientifically accurate yeah. because it's frankly just not going to be. Yeah. And I think our target audience originally is like 9 to 10 year olds. So we're just looking to explore these key concepts rather than have perfect scientific accuracy. Perfect. So uh, now that we have the Earth uh, out in the, in the field, I think what's going to happen is that if we try to rotate the Earth, mm -hmm. uh, around its axis, it'll rotate on its axis, but we won't be able to move this around the sun. Okay. And so one of the things that we want to do is we want to move the container of the earth uh, back to zero position, and we want to uh, move the child uh, outside. Okay. So that way what happens is that uh, when we move the, the container, uh, the child moves relative to the parent. Okay, so you're at saying a 360 like degree the center angle. of the whole object is like the middle of the sun. Middle of the sun. So when we do the orbit yes. section of this, the, yes. the, it will orbit around the sun. Yeah. So we can just rotate the, the whole object. Yeah. It will actually move like a the child object, which is actually the Earth sphere itself, exactly. and that will out to like its orbit position. Yeah. Cool, that makes sense. So, so we can just do that with this. We can bring it back. We can actually just write zero, zero, zero. Make it simple. Cool uh, and accurate, I guess, there. Yeah. And then we sort of bring it out. We bring out the container. Uh, okay, cool. And so you can see that I clicked on the container specifically and I brought it out mm -hmm. to this relative position. But if I click on uh, the parent object, it's still positioned relative to this. Cool, okay. So in a way, uh, because... The position, the rotation of this will be relative to this. It'll move around the sun. Awesome. Okay, that so, makes sense. So, so getting back to like the, so we need to get the sun. So we've got the Earth in the right place. We've got the sun in the right place. We know we've set it up so we can do the rotations correctly. Now we just need to get the sun to actually start invisible. Yeah. Uh, and then we have the process of the sort of light sun emerging and the light from the sun yeah. emerging. Let's do it. So. First thing we need to do is we need to toggle visibility of the sun. Uh, now, one of the things that you'll notice is that we have like these circles next to certain elements mm -hmm. uh, for an object or, or a tracker uh, in the scene tree. And what that means is that this is compatible with the patch editor. Okay. So we can actually bring that into our patch editor. Cool. So if I click on this radio button here, it just brings the visibility patch 
uh, for uh, that object. Okay. Uh, and now I can just link, uh, based on this, I can just link it to the visibility. Uh, and then so when the counter is greater than one, uh, it's gonna make the sun appear. Let's test this out, shall we? So, so the best way to test this out is to actually use the emulator here. We just uh, go to simulate touch. Mm -hmm. And then we tap on the screen and the sun appears. Awesome. And so it works. That's great. Uh, of course, by default, the Earth is already there, okay. which is as intended. OK, so we have the, the sun object, but it's not actually, although it looks like it's nice and shiny, it's not actually lit. So we need to add a way of making it so it's actually lit in the scene. Yeah, so one of the things that Spark AI Studio gives us is a number of different lighting options. Uh, we have ambient light, uh, which is sort of like uh, non-unidirectional light. Uh, uh, there's directional light, and then there's point light, which is sort of like omnidirectional, but mm -hmm. originating from one point. Okay, so uh, kind of like the sun. <laughs> kind of like the sun, exactly. Perfect. Uh, so we, we bring that in, uh, and now we just want to drag it under the sun container, like that. Okay. And then uh, you mentioned you wanted to sort of glow in place, right? Or sort of yeah, appear. Yeah, I think when it appears, if it just doesn't just, just turn on, it'd be great if it just sort of has a transition to it, sort of almost like, uh, you know, you're turning up a dimmer switch just to make it really obvious that the light nice. uh, is emerging. So uh, for that, what we can do is we can in, uh, manipulate the intensity okay. of the light. Uh, we just click on that, so we get the patch. Uh, now, ideally, what we want to do is we want to transition this uh, so for that, what we have is animation patches. Okay. We have different kinds of animation patches. We have frame animation, we have loop animation. We'll be covering some of these later, uh, but you can sort of go through it and read up on it. Mm -hmm. And that's what the patch edit allows you to do is you can just search and, and read up on different patches as well. Uh, so we bring the animation patch and then we sort of uh, transition this Okay. value. Uh, now, you will see that by default, it opens up as like with the 3D coordinates system. Uh, we want to change that uh, to a number Okay. in this case, because we are only manipulating 0 to 100. Okay, so it's a single number. Yeah. Right, that makes sense. So we start with 0, and then we end with 100. Uh, and then we sort of link that to the point light. Mm -hmm. And we link the progress of the animation to the transition. So progress maps to progress. Cool. And then we link this. We trigger the play with this. It'll introduce a pulse in the middle. Um, cool. And how do you control the, the amount of time the transition takes? Oh, that we can do right here. So with duration, we can set that to, let's say, 10 seconds, if it's like a really slow thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we could sort of uh, just see the sun sort of slowly. Yeah, 10 seconds is quite a long time. 20 so seconds. Maybe, maybe, maybe like, we can reduce it to five. Yeah, I think okay. maybe like even one or two is probably like, you just want a like really quick effect to show that the sun like emerges. I don't think it needs to be too long. So I think Perfect. that makes sense. Let's awesome. make it three. Yeah. Cool. So. so I guess, can I just talk through this to make sure I've got this straight in my head? We've got a screen tap, which triggers the counter. Yep. And when the counter is greater than one, we turn the sun on with the visibility. And then we also turn on the light at the same time. Yes. Okay, cool. So that should all be working now. If you tap in the simulator, presumably what should happen is that we should actually... Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. So now the next thing that we want to do is, in fact, one of the things that you'll notice is that you can even see the values changing over here. Uh, okay. And that's the wonderful thing about Patch Editor, yeah. is that uh, even if you had, like, let's say, a face tracker on, and you were point, you were, or, or a plane tracker, or you were tracking certain points, or changing certain points, those values would change in real time yeah. inside the patch. And so you're almost, you can see how it's changing awesome. um, inside the simulator. So uh, let's group these together. Now, one of the cool things about Patch Editor is that it can get messy, but we also give you tools to organize it better. So what I'm going to do here is, now that we have all the relevant pieces uh, for the sun, I'm going to group these together. And uh, right click. And then I'm going to use comment around. OK. So this I see there's, there's comment around and group. What's yeah. the difference between those two? So so group is essentially, it will collapse that into a single patch. 
And then that patch is something that maybe you want to reuse. Uh, again, copy paste. Uh, and then you just use the input output okay. uh, points on that uh, to sort of. Cool. So that's like any sort of thing you want to re reuse again and again. Yeah. And so like if you say, say we, we just did a transition, if you just want to use that specific part of like exactly. 0 to 1 transition triggered off some sort of input, you could just yes. package that up into a little yes. patch group. And then you could just bring that in, copy and paste it or whatever Absolutely. if you lost different places. Yeah. So can it be used to make your graph simpler yes. as well as, okay, cool. And more and, organized. And more organized. And then uh, comment around is, how is that different? Uh, comment around is just essentially sort of putting a label on it. Okay. Uh, and it, it's it's visually uh, cleaner, uh, but it, you still see all the patches. Uh, with group, you don't see all the patches. You have to go inside the the grouped patch ah, to okay. see, to explore it. So this is just, it's literally labeling. It's a comment. So you, yes, it just it's helps just like a you comment. visually organize exactly. your patch graph. It's exactly cool. how you would comment in code. Awesome. Right. Uh, so let's say this is the sun. The cool thing is we can even change the color of this. Awesome. So let's use orange. Uh, yes. Sweet. So now we've got, uh, we've just talked through, but we've got the tap triggering the sun and all the animation. The next step we had in our list was to make uh, the Earth actually start to rotate. Perfect. So for that, what we need to do is we need to bring in the container uh, and then we can sort of bring in the rotation patch for this. Uh, and what we want to do here is... So that, that the, the thing we point at, so this is sometimes where labeling can get a bit confusing, isn't it? So that, yeah. that's where we've brought in the actual sort of Earth object, which we yeah. moved out earlier from the sun. Yes. So we're trying to actually rotate the Earth, not the whole... Not the Earth whole thing. Right. Yeah. So yeah. this is yeah. the rotation part. Okay, cool. Is there anything we can do in patches to make that clearer to, so we know what we're, we're working on? Can we label the, the perhaps this patch? Make it... Oh, yeah. So you can actually double click and you can change the name. You're right. This is a very common mistake because this is like a very... Awesome. So that's Earth. So that's the Earth, but that's the Earth rotation bit we're going for. Yes. So we call it, maybe we call it Earth rotation. Yeah. So we could call this Earth rotation. Uh, container is a very generic name. Okay. Three. Okay. So we've got the Earth rotation. So that's what we need to manipulate. And now I guess we need to like trigger it off the second tap. Yes. So we do the same thing we did here. Do a little bit of copy pasta. Uh, change the value to two. Uh, you notice when I copy pasted this, it made the connection with the original ah, yeah, okay. counter. So uh, now what we want to do is we want to do a loop animation. Okay. In this case. Uh, earlier we did a regular sort of standard animation, which is just like a one time animation okay uh, we, now this time you want to loop it because the earth keeps rotating right right uh, okay so the so first one was just like we want to turn it on and then we want to leave it we don't do anything else this yes. is because we want the earth to keep rotating yes because the earth does continue to rotate, continue to yeah, rotate cool. yes uh so so we have the loop animation and then we introduce a transition uh and now this time we leave it at the 3d sort of start and end point okay position and the only thing we want to do here is change the value on the z-axis and make it rotate 360 degrees. So if we connect this output over here, and you can see we need to maintain like the same start and end value for x and y. Okay. And we link progress over here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I can see the Earth spinning really fast. Rapidly. Yeah. Uh, so let's uh, slow it down a little bit, maybe take it down to 10 seconds or something. 10 seconds. Okay, that looks a bit more yeah. like understandable. Yeah. I think the point is that the, the, the speed needs to be slow enough that you can look at it and see that, the you know, there's the continent of Africa or whatever yeah. going around and you can actually see it coming on and, and, and off. This is where I live. Life. And yeah. and kids can be like, oh, this Yeah, exactly. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like, can you find where you live? Can you see yeah. where it's day and night? Yeah. yeah, that's exactly. Awesome. So let's link that uh, greater than equal to condition. So on... The next tap, we make the Earth rotate. Mm -hmm. And we can actually group this together as well. I mean, comment around it just to. Yeah. 
Earth rotation. Cool. And we can give it a green color. Perfect. Okay, so then in the simulator, we should be able to tap. If we restarted the effect, this is where we started from the beginning. Restart. Okay, and then we've got nothing, and then we simulate touch. We the first touch makes the sun appear, and the second touch, as we can see over there, makes the Earth start to, to rotate. Perfect. Awesome. Now, we also want it to orbit around yeah, the sun. Yeah, that's right. So, let's uh, bring in the next patch. Uh, which is okay. Rotation. So you're going back to the the, the parent object here, which yes. is is center is the center of the sun. Yes. And but the Earth object is like a child of that. So when we rotate the whole thing, it rotates. But the center point of this rotation is the yes. sun, which creates like the yeah. in this case circular orbit, which isn't yeah. perfectly accurate. But I think that that's totally fine for this yeah. simulation to understand the core the core concepts. Absolutely. It's like an invisible plane, uh, and then this is at the edge of it. Yeah. And we're just rotating it. So we bring this here. So again, we've got a confusing name. And we got a confusing we name. That. We can call it orbit. And then we can do the same thing we did earlier, which is we can even copy paste these two patches. OK. Uh, Oops, just copied the wrong one, but that's yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. I can always unlink that, and you'll see that it'll unlink oh, that yeah, one. Cool. Yeah, sometimes you can create multiple uh, output lines, but you can only have one input. Okay, uh, because of course, right? That's how that's how we have stuff in uh, as we would do in scripting. So we we have the transition, we have the loop animation. We just link this value to the Earth orbit. And then if we zoom out, we can see that the Earth is rotating. Wow, that's around. amazing. So the Earth is orbiting around the sun. Again, that seems a bit fast. So I think 10 seconds is probably, it's supposed to be simulating like a whole year of yeah. time. So I think we should make it much slower than the rotation. So maybe make it 20 seconds, 30 seconds? Maybe 30 or 40 seconds, yeah. Maybe maybe 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And I think Let's we want to see the whole orbit. Maybe 30 seconds might be too slow, but we can we can test that out. And we see can test that out, yeah. Happens. So if we restart this... Okay. And we so try this out again. Sun appears. Oh, we've got the sun. Oh, it starts rotating. Yep. And then third oh, tap. And Amazing. Earth. Awesome. That's really cool. Okay, so we can add, I guess we add a group around there just to tidy that up. Just to tidy that up a little bit. Uh, Earth orbit. Perfect. Awesome. So just going back to the counter, we said at the beginning, I think we set like five, but actually we've got three steps. Yeah. So should we just make the max count three and then it will start at the beginning again? Let's do that. So sweet. Max count three. And then we can just try it again in the simulator. Yes. One, two, rotation, three. Ah, so maybe we need the max count to be four because it's actually going over the top at three. Oh, right. So that's good. Four. Okay, so we restart the effect. One, two, two. rotation, three. Awesome. And then fourth. Starts the effect again. Starts the effect again. One, two, three. Perfect. Awesome, that's great. So the last thing we, we talked about at the very beginning was having something which could actually draw out the orbit view. So although we can see and we can look in this, we can see at the moment the Earth is, we can see it rotating around the sun. Uh, it'd be interesting to sort of draw that out and give people a real reference to, just to show that. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if there's a way we can, how do we, can, we, can we create a line that does that? How do, we, how do we follow an object like that? That's interesting. We can't really create a line, but what we could do is sort of have a particle emitter Okay. That's uh, that's one of the things that Spark AI Studio allows you to do is sort of emit a textured uh, particle. Uh, it with sort of like you can uh, change the speed, you can change the direction or the angle. Uh, let's try it out and see okay. if that sort of helps us create cool. that sort of line. So it's kind of like a trail of breadcrumbs it's leaving behind. Exactly. But it's just yeah. loads of them and yeah. they stay yeah. forever. Yeah. So yeah. it looks like a line, but yeah. actually it's made of lots of individual things. Exactly. Okay, cool. That makes sense. How would we set that up? 
Perfect. So what we need to do is we need to add it inside the Earth object. Okay, because the particles uh, sort of are coming out of the Earth. Coming out yeah. of the Earth. Yeah. Uh, so we just uh, add that here. As you can see, there is a particle system mm -hmm. option. So we just add that here. Uh, and it adds an emitter under uh, the Earth object. Okay, so then the, the position of that is always linked to the Earth object. Yeah. Right. Okay, and right now it's not emitting anything. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to emit uh, a specific texture, right? So we can actually choose a material here. We can say create new material and create a default material. Okay. And then we go to the material and we can just pick a color. Yeah, I right? think it's random. We can just have a... Uh, so let's go for like a yellow or something. It's really obvious. Yellow. Let's do yellow then. Uh, oh yeah, look, I can see. You can, can see, see a, particles coming out of you the You can see a tiny little bit of particle coming out of the earth, like it's okay. on fire. Okay, cool. So I can see that we've got these particles coming out of the earth object at the moment. Um, yeah. But actually, I, I kind of don't want. You know, they they look like they're spraying and looking like they're disappearing. Yeah. Um, and so what happens if we move the earth at the moment? So if we if we tip tip tap through until we get to the point where the Earth's moving, what happens? So you can ah, see that okay. it's not really staying in place. Yeah. And then, as you can see, it seem, kind of seems like the Earth is on fire. Yeah, it's just sort of like spraying out yeah. yellow particles at random. Yeah. It's not what we want. We want to like a consistent yeah. trail. Okay, so yeah. they're, they're disappearing, basically. How do we make yeah. sure they don't disappear and uh, spray out? So the, so the way we can do that, actually, is... Uh, let me just pause that. We'll restart it. Uh, the way we can do that is we go to emitter and we can change these values. So lifespan actually allows us to create more retention mm -hmm. for the particles. So, so that's, here, that's literally how long the particles will stay for. in the, the lifespan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So uh, because they disappear in 0.4 seconds, which is why you see them really right. randomly going out. Uh, so we can make this 35 seconds because the Earth orbit is 30 seconds. Yeah, okay. So, so it can, it'll always be there. And then when it starts to disappear, we'll be overwriting it. Within, overwriting it yeah, again. Sure. Yeah. So we make that 35. And then the speed itself actually is what creates like that random sort oh, of so that's actually thing. the movement of the particles. So yes. We don't want them to move at all. We just want we them to stay in the same place. Exactly. Okay. So we can just make that zero. Cool. Awesome. So we've got, th yeah, birth rate. Of 20? Birth rate, we can increase. Okay, so that, that it's like more, a more solid line. Okay, so that just makes more particles. More particles, yeah. To 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So if we start running that one, so tap through a few more times again. No, let's tap. Tap one, tap two, tap three. There we go. Amazing. And then we've got a line drawn out the side of the earth. Which I guess if we leave it for its thirty seconds of rotation, we'll see that it joins up again on the other side. Yeah. And then we've got a full trace of the Earth. That's pretty epic. Amazing. So we've got the just looking back on the few things we wanted to create right at the beginning. We wanted to add a system of touch gestures so you could tap through, which we can now do, and that's controlled via the patch editor. Yeah. Um we wanted to make the sun visible on the first tap and that the light of the sun come out. We wanted to then add the rotation of the Earth, which we've done. Yeah. But we had to do a bit of a trick there where we moved the parent object to the center of the sun so we could have the orbit, but also rotate the actual sun object, so the Earth object itself. Uh, and then we, we controlled the orbit of the sun, we turned that on, and then we added this particle emitter to draw this line so we could trace out this, this circle to really highlight what the, the orbit itself. So we've got all of these different things together. That's really cool. Um, I guess what we'd like to do now is just like, what's, what are the next steps? What do we have to do after we've created this? Let's test this out with in the real world. With okay. uh, our Spark AI Studio Player, which you can find on both uh, the App Store and Google Play Store. Awesome. So here's what we can do. Okay, so you get the Spark AR Player app on your phone, yeah. um, and what we want to do is recognize this target, but at the moment it doesn't look like we've got any effect loaded in yeah. the player. So how do we do that? So the way we do that is we just go to Spark AR Player. It knows that you're connected to a phone, and okay. that you're actually connected to the Spark AR Player on your phone. And then we just take that, we point it to the target. Okay, so we try and acquire some target. Yeah. 
and, and then, then we move out and we can see the earth oh yeah awesome and so if but you it's see, dark <laughs> but it's dark oh but like it's dark point. yeah which is yeah so let's uh let's introduce our new tap gesture interaction so we tap ah cool we got the sun we got the sun awesome. and now we got the earth's rotation and then now we have the earth sort of moving oh that's so cool okay one thing i've noticed is that the light isn't quite shining like brightly enough on the the earth to really see it yeah so i guess this is why testing is so important testing is so important it. yeah so what could we do i suppose we could ha could we in increase like the power of the sun or the range of the light or something yeah we could we could try doing that let's let's try that so what we do for that is we go to the point light source and then we can try to increase the range and sort of make it, let's say, 200. Yeah, let's see if that works. Let's see if it's 200 works. a bit of trial works. and error, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit okay, of trial cool. and error. Uh, and then, and then let's, again. let's just go to the mirroring option and let's refresh. And then so we track this. Cool. Thank you. And then well, it appears. Yes. Oh, cool. and it's all sad and dark. And and now oh, it has wow. light. There we go. We can see like the light part of the Earth. Okay. Yeah. Now if you look at the Earth, and then we tap again. And you look at the Earth, you can see like one side is dark, one side is amazing. And, and then you tap we... again, and you can ah, see, the, see Earth the different rotating. Like, rotating round. That's really cool. And then what happens when we tap again? And that's you can see. And tap again, and now it's rotating. See the orbit, and, and we you can, can see actually the line coming while out. it's rotating, you can sort of zoom in and see. Amazing. That's really cool. So I think when we when we set out on this journey, what we wanted to be able to create was an effect where, looking back on our briefs, we could explain this concept of rotation, day and night, and that the fact that the Earth rotates around the sun. And I think looking at this, we can clearly see that when you turn turn the sun on with a tap, the light shines and it illuminates one side. We've got a light side, we've got a dark side, and that changes because of the rotation. And then we got the idea that the earth rotates around the sun and we can see that really visually. And I think the thing I love about this is like, as you said, you can just explore it, right? So yeah. it's not static. You can just sort of dive in there. You can almost put your phone in the middle of the sun to see what the perspective looks like from the, from the, you know, from the other side, you can see it. You can see how the Earth rotates. The light changes on the Earth um, all the time. You can follow around. So it feels like much more interactive. It feels like a real representation, and you can sort of get an expression, of, uh, an impression of how the physics actually works. Yeah. Um, amazing. That's so cool. It's really hard to do this without AR, right? Imagine all the things you would need to make this happen um, <clears throat> in a classroom. And so, the next step for us would be. To put it out there yeah awesome so how do you get an effect from ar studio and on the player into the into the real world well good point but the first thing is we need to optimize this ah, because what right. we didn't do is we didn't check out how big the file is or how heavy or optimized the assets okay. are so let's save the project file first always save your work right <laughs> don't want any surprises don't want any surprises. Sunlight. And now that we have saved the project, uh, we can sort of try to see what the assets are like. So we can click on export. And the good thing about Spark AR Studio is that we have really good compression engines mm. for both uh, textures, PNGs, <clears throat> all sorts of things. So you can oh, see that wow. right now the size is huge. Yeah, we've got some red dots. Not you, ready to submit. Okay, that yeah. sounds that doesn't sound good. So we can click on the view asset summary and it'll show us where the sizes okay. are going wrong. So if we were to sort this by original size, we can see that textures, these are the textures which are each one megabyte, which is a lot. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, and maybe we don't need yeah. that heavy. Maybe we don't need all of them. Yeah. So... Let's try to see what we can remove. Base colors. Yeah. Right. And uh, this one as well. And this one as well. Yeah. Right. Probably one of the innocent ones, I don't know which one. Yeah. 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 So. Let's look up 
the new file sizes. Oh, that's much better, but still not there yet. Yeah, still not quite there yet. So we need to make some more optimization. I think we need to reduce some stuff from the earth. Okay, can we do? Is there any compression settings we can go for? Because I don't think it's really that important that the like the material of the sun is absolutely perfect. Yeah, let's go to the different material settings uh, and then try to see how much we can okay. reduce from there. So if we click on, say, this material, which right now takes up 524 KB. Oh, so this texture, you mean? This texture, yes. Yeah. Uh, then we can actually... Uh, see, we've got compression settings there. We can yes. change it on global setting. Perhaps we can change it to something... Uh, else if we click on the global setting. Ah, we can do a smart... So we can do a smart one. Sweet, smart override. So currently it's like 100%. What happens if we move that down to like, you know, 50% or 25% Yeah. on the smart quality? So now you can see uh, it does a different compression setting for each device okay. type uh, because all of these device types have different sort of formats mm -hmm. for, for textures. Okay. So iOS has a different format, Android has a different format which are like two different formats so we can we can reduce the size of this we can maybe go for 512 mm -hmm. or uh, see how much that gives us because the sun was quite big wasn't yeah. it we had to scale it down so we oh should... wow that's gone down looks like it's gone down massively already massively yeah that looks good looks um, much better can we reduce the quality a little it's currently 100 percent. is that necessary maybe we can go for 60 that makes sense. 36. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, cool. And now if we go back to like the export, can we see a big change in the, uh, the overall size of the project? Well, right now we've only sort of tweaked around with the sun. We also have the earth to tweak around. Ah, good point. Right. But now we've got to the point where we're, we're ready to... It's ready to survive, yeah. yes. That's, that's better, but yes. we can still do... We can, do we can still do better than that, yeah. yes. Uh, so let's... Go to the earth. Uh, let's go to the material. Let's try to, uh, sorry, let's go to the texture. And then let's try to see if we can do smart compression. Uh, and if we can bring it down. Perfect. Awesome, that seems a lot better. Yeah. The good thing is with the emitter, because we're using a standard color, we're not really using any, um, like, assets. Yeah. So it's all computationally done. Yeah, so that's so very like efficient. A free texture. Yes, it's a free texture. Awesome. Uh, now we that's go to amazing. export, and we can see great. Cool, so now we're much lower. But I think... We're covering this in another masterclass, how to like yes. go into depth into optimization and yes. to really make your effect yeah. um, as optimized as possible because that's really important because we have to remember that these effects can run not just only on the sort of latest iPhone devices, but they can also run on you know older Android phones, even older iPhones. Absolutely. You know, there's uh, millions of devices available through Facebook, which we can put the error effects on, but those yeah. devices, you know, they're, they're just range. So it's really yeah. important that we make as best effort as possible to make it small and as performance. So... There's like two things I think that we must, you, it seems like you must do, right? You must test it because we, we gave that impression there of testing it and how important we learned actually the sun uh, wasn't bright enough. Uh, yes. But also like if you can test in a range of devices, you can see how things work and make sure they, they work across the sort of the people yes. you're actually targeting. And we definitely advise that okay. to everybody who's doing this because one of the things that you want is you want it to reach to the most number of people. Yeah. Um, and uh, the reason we want to also compress and optimize is because over network, people usually download these effects. Mm. So if you get something fast and snappy, it's more likely going to be used and shared uh, than something that's slow uh, to load. Awesome. That's great. So I think we've got everything we need to the effect. The last thing is like uh, publishing, but I think we, we're talking about that in another, yes. another, work, another yeah. masterclass as well. So once you've got this, you can save it out, you can share it with people. Um, and I think the, the next step, if it was me, is that I want to put this in the hand of some real children. Yes. So we think this is, you know, I think this is great. I hope you think this is great. But yeah. in reality, we need to see whether people actually using it get any sense of it. And I, I can already think of some things that are missing there. Like, how would people know whether to tap? Yeah. Um, perhaps we need a bit more explanation. Perhaps we need some more hints in the, in the system to get people to understand it more. Yes. Um, 
is you know what target would we actually choose where would we put in the book how would that work in a sort of classroom experience and i think right. like going out and testing that's probably the only way to learn yes uh, and get the right feedback so absolutely i mean for that we can always add uh texts and instructions mm -hmm. and then use the patch editor like we did to trigger the visibility of those texts and instructions ah amazing yeah. right cool great how do you feel about that I think it was great. Uh, it finally worked out. Uh, we got to create a cool uh, effect. We had a good creative concept. Uh, we got to drill through it. Uh, we explored a number of different features inside Spark AI Studio. Um, and uh, I think we covered a lot of different topics um, in one very quick session. Yeah, great. I learned a huge amount from doing this um, yeah. and working through and I hope you guys too did too. So thank you for, for joining us in this AR Masterclass. And please leave some comments for us to follow on. Thank you. <laughs>